God bless you. Welcome back to the Triage Room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. The title of this video is Final Signs and Prophecies to be Fulfilled Before Jesus Returns. Now, according to scripture, um, Jesus' coming is closer than we think. In fact, Jesus himself says in Revelation 22 verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So with the backdrop of uh, COVID-19, it's one of the biggest questions people are, um, are discussing right now, whether it be in, uh, at home, at work, wherever. People are asking the question, if they believe in Christ, that is, um, when will Christ return a second time? What are the signs of his return? Are we living in the last days? Um, it's a question that's been asked uh, for centuries now. In fact, in um, Mark 13, 3 to 4, Matthew 24, 1 to 3, Peter, James, John, Andrew, the disciples of Jesus themselves ask him that very question. Um, we see in Matthew 24, verse 3, which I'll read. And he, Jesus, sat down upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. So it's not a new question. It's a question that's been asked many, many times. And Jesus went on uh, prophetically um, to list several definitive end time signs. I'm going to run through some of them in a minute, you know, pointing to his imminent return. And one thing I, I must emphasize before I go any further, Jesus is not only priest and king, he is also prophet. So Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. And I'll be focusing on his prophetic ministry more than his uh, kingship or his priestly ministry. Hebrews 1, I'll read verses 1 to 2, says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, Jesus, whom he appointed the heir of all things through him also he created the world in other words what hebrews 1 1 to 2 is saying jesus who is one with god is greater than the prophets of old and it's through him in these last days god speaks directly whether it be a past tense present tense or prophetically future tense to all mankind so, as I've said, I'll be focusing on his prophetic ministry in this video pertaining to the end times. It's also uh, important for me to make this clear. Um, anyone claiming to be a prophet, their credibility um, is either strengthened or destroyed on the back of what they prophesy, whether or not it comes to pass or not. Okay? If a prophet as an example, prophesies sunshine for the next six months and all we get is rain. That's a false prophet. Okay, it's a false prophet. But Jesus, rather, you know, as prophet is credible and true because his prophecies, they mature, they come to pass. To further underline his credibility as a prophet in Matthew 24, you know, he foretells the destruction of Jerusalem, the city. Um, it's worth noting, Jerusalem had been destroyed before, but Jesus uh, prophesying about the destruction of Jerusalem in this instant, you know, is more significant because it's linked to end time. It's linked to his return. So let's look at Matthew 24, verse 1, first before we go ahead. And it says this, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to, for, to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So Jesus right off the bat said to the disciples, you know, Jerusalem will be destroyed. 
you know, as a sign, you know, or the beginning of the end, you know, which will point to my imminent return. Off the bat, step one, Jerusalem will be destroyed. And some 37 years later, AD uh, 70, what Jesus prophesied came to pass because the Roman Empire, you know, besieged Jerusalem and they sacked it. In other words, they, they, they destroyed the, 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 the temple and laid it flat to the ground. And this was witnessed by someone called Je Jehephus. Josephus, he was a historian, and he wrote the account of what happened to Jerusalem. You know, um, so we have factual, tangible proof that this actually occurred. Um, I'll just give you some of his writings. It says here, now as soon as the army, speaking of the Roman uh, army, had no more people to slay or to plunder because there remained none to be the object of their fury, Titus Caesar gave orders that they should now demolish the entire city and temple. He says here, it was so thoroughly laid even with the ground by those that dug it up to the foundation that there was left nothing to make those that came thither believe Jerusalem had ever been inhabited. Wow. So Josephus was an eyewitness to the fulfillment of prophecy that Jesus had prophesied somewhat 37 years prior. So if Jesus was right about the destruction of Jerusalem in Matthew 24 verse 1, surely he is right about the other signs of the end times in the latter verses of the same chapter. So let us plow ahead. You know, this is this is a, a long video. I'm trying to make it as short as I can. Um, let's look at the first sign. What are the first signs Jesus spoke about or prophesied about of the end times? The first sign is the rise of false preachers, false teachers, false prophets. Verses 4 of Matthew 24 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11, which I've attached to verses 4 and 5, says, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. In today's uh, society, you know, there are many, many ministries worldwide that are solely set up in these last days, not to preach Christ crucified, not to win souls for the kingdom. Their sole modus operandi, mode of operation, is to lead people astray, to take advantage of the weak, the vulnerable, the lonely, to, to fleece us of our monies, basically, to make us poor while they become rich, to entertain the flesh rather than to uh, fill us with the love of God. You know, it's almost seeking celebrity. That's what most of these ministers are today, celebrity. Okay, it's about themselves. They're in bed with devils, workers of divination and witchcraft. Witchcraft. That's the first sign. And that's why the Bible says this in 1 John 4, 1 to 5. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone out in the world. It says in verse 2 of 1 John 4, hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore, we have heard that it should come. And even now already, it is in the world. It is in the world right now. Sign number one, take heed. Sign number two, the rise of conflicts, wars throughout the world. Verses 6 of Matthew 24 says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. I'll stop there. Within the last hundred or just over a hundred years, we've had World War I, which started in 1914. We had World War II, Vietnam, 9-11, you know, the Gulf Wars, wars in the Middle East, ongoing conflicts between Palestine and Israel, the rise of the Taliban in Afghanistan today, today. I could go on. And all these things I've mentioned have happened, as I've said, um, within a hundred or so years. So we are witnessing, you know, verses six and seven of Matthew 24 coming to fruition. The prophecies Christ gave on the Mount of Olives, we are living it. The signs of the times are everywhere, to coin a phrase. Sign three, unprecedented famine, pestilence and earthquakes in divers or multiple, multiple places. Verses seven, um, latter, verse, latter part of verse seven of Matthew 24 says, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. Years ago, if you had said to me, um, Stephen, what country or countries you expect there to be famine? The first place that would come to mind would be Ethiopia. Um, when I was growing up, um, all I remember is every year or so there was famine. It's always Ethiopia. It's always Ethiopia. Nowhere else but Ethiopia. Um, in fact, in 1985, we had something called Live Aid, and they raised a reported $127 million um, for, for famine relief in Ethiopia. But today, famine affects South Sudan, parts of Yemen, um, parts of Nigeria, uh, Burkina Faso, and the list goes on and on and on. Famine is, is, is in diverse places now. Whereas it was in perhaps one or two countries, now it's in diverse places. We talk about pestilence and earthquakes. Today we know that uh, Haiti has suffered one of the worst earthquakes in its history, where lots of uh, infrastructure has been destroyed and with earthquakes comes pestilence. But not only Haiti, um, China, you know, has had its fair share of earthquakes. Indonesia, Iran, Turkey, Japan, Peru, United States, Italy. The list goes on. Earthquakes, pestilence in divers places. I go on. You know, um, we have just lived two years or nearly two years of pestilence or rather a pandemic an unprecedented time for many, many people. Many lives have been lost, you know, COVID-19. So again, we can say, you know what? What Christ predicted or prophesied, you know, Matthew 24, verse seven, we are living it. We are experiencing it right now. We're in the middle of it. You know, signs of the times are everywhere. Sign four, the church afflicted, the church silenced. And it says, and all these things are the beginning of sorrows. That's verse eight. Verses nine of Matthew 24 says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. We are living in a, a very secular age, an age of apostasy, where the Bible or the word of God is no longer the moral standard or the guide for mankind. You know, our laws are not built upon the word of God, even in countries claiming to be Christian. We are led by secular, you know, um, governments, you know, we have this great turning away, which is apostasy from religion in today's society. It's about me, uh, myself and I, you know. The church has been sidelined, you know. Um, 
you can now get arrested for 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 speaking scripture <laughs> you know um, you can state some facts about homosexuality in scripture and get yourself in trouble you can state some facts about abortion in scripture and get yourself in trouble um, in today's society Christians are now being per persecuted in Burma China Eritrea India Iraq northern Nigeria North Korea Pakistan Russia Saudi Arabia Syria Vietnam the list goes on in divers places sign of the times sign five the rise of selfishness lack of compassion and love um, verses 12 of Matthew 24 says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold we are living in a narcissistic society or world uh, where one's um, self-importance is inflated where people lack empathy you know um, people are now self-centered it's all about them where love thy neighbor is no longer uh, important you know some people don't even care about their neighbor um, where nationalism feminism racism anti-semitism you know all these things are on the up on the rise you know, divorce is on the rise. Manslaughter, murder is on the rise. I recently made a video about why are black boys killing black boys? A phenomenon that's happened in the last, or so within the last 10 years, you know. It's, I, I scratch my head, you know. But the Bible says these things would happen. These are signs of the times pointing to the end. They're not the end themselves, but they're pointing to the end. The Bible says in verse 13 of Matthew 24, but he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And last but not least, the most significant end time sign, and this is a very important one, and it's Matthew 24 verse 14, and it says this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When the gospel of Christ is preached throughout the world, then shall the end come. Then Christ will break the clouds and we'll see him triumphantly coming. Amen. Let me say this. There has never been a time when the world or all nations, you know, have been in a position like we have today due to technology you know, to be able to hear and to share the gospel of Christ worldwide. Never have we been in a time like this. You know, Jesus, you know, even in his ministry was limited because he only uh, ministered in the Holy Land. Paul, although he had three um, significant missions, was also limited because he only went so far. But today, with the advent of satellites, Radio, TV, social media, my goodness, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, Teams, Zoom, live stream, you can list many, many more. We're able to reach anybody in the four corners of the world without having to leave our homes. Wow. Today, today, we are able to do this. So, with that in mind, you know, the last sign. Um, as prophesied by Jesus in Matthew 24. We are in the process of seeing that fulfilled now in our lifetime. I don't think there is a, a country in the world that has not yet heard the gospel. Maybe there are people in, the, in those countries who are still yet to hear the gospel. But because of uh, technology, you know, the gospel, like, a, like tentacles, have gone out to every country, every nation, whether they accept it or reject it, they have heard the gospel. So the prophecy, the last prophecy, Matthew 24 verse 14, as I've said, you know, we're in the process of seeing that fulfilled in our lifetime. The stage is set, then shall the end come. Are you ready for the end? Are you prepared for the end? 
Hebrews 2 verse 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Wow. So, we see, you know, that signs of the times, prophecies that Christ gave on Mount Olives, Matthew 24, they are coming to pass. Jesus as prophet is both credible and true. So let's get our house in order. Let's be ready because the end is at hand. And as I close, please share this with as many people as you can. Let them know, you know, that signs of the times are everywhere, but more so the end, the end is nearer than we think. May God bless you. May God keep you until next time. God bless. Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you, may God keep you. Until next time.